I've opened up Portrait Studio and I've set up my model. Portrait Studio is a program we've all worked on, me and my, me and my uh, partners. And what we've done is we've made it so that you have control over lights, model, and the camera. So this means that uh, you have control over your model and uh, in, in a studio. That's basically why it's called Portrait Studio. And uh, the point of it is to help you establish some really, really good cast shadows. Now, where do shadows go on the face is a big question. Uh, a lot of people, when they start drawing a portrait, they you know that they can draw an eye, a nose, and a mouth, and they think that's all it takes to draw a face. It isn't all that it takes. What comes first is the skeletal structure. So what came before the eyelashes and the eyebrows? The skeletal structure came first. So that's what we have to work on in the first preliminary brushstrokes of the painting, of the portrait. That's where we, we ask this question, where do shadows go? We don't ask the question five hours into the rendering process and we've got details down and we're missing a core shadow. We have to ask ourselves this question. So when I'm looking at this piece right over here, and um, apparently my brush, my, my tablet has stopped working. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. And uh, it's backwards now. And yeah, it's backwards. So not really sure what to do. I think this Cintiq is causing some trouble. Yep, 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 yep. Services. Wacom. Stop the service. Stop the service. Hopefully this fixed the error. Yay! Okay, so now we open this doohickey right over here. And the Cintiq isn't connected, so that's good. Alright, so <clears throat> when we look at this piece here, we see some really, really essential core shadows. Make a list. Write this list down for me, alright? Um, one of the biggest core shadows of the face, one of the biggest ones you have to draw when you're starting the portrait, you have to draw, you have to apply this one big core shadow. So after you lay down a big smudgy blob of mid-tone, add this big one next, the half shadow. Alright, after the half shadow, so I'm actually just going to make some notes over here for you guys to use. So the half shadow, or I call it the beard. <clears throat> I'm going to go through every single one of these and see if the 14 day challengers have used them, alright? This half shadow is really important because when we rotate the model, oh, ro rotate the model from the side, let me lift her head just a little bit, when we rotate the model, she is actually, the camera is just a little bit low on her face. Okay. So when we rotate her from the side, I think this whole model is off, but uh, I think it's the neck, but it's okay. We'll get away with this. There we go. I fixed it. It was just the neck tilt. <clears throat> All right. So this half face right here, if we rotate the model from the side, we see that this part, this forehead area is much closer to the light than the chin. This means that if this was just with one big sphere, so if we're talking shapes, we're talking random shapes, so the sphere, the sphere is exactly the same situation. It's in the exactly the same kind of situation here. The light is coming up from above, and half of it is in shadow. This is the, this is the lowest version of the face in its lowest form. All right, so that means that tilting the head from the side, wherever the light source is coming from, that's the half that gets the most light. The camera isn't moving with the uh, light source right now. I mean, the light source isn't moving with the model, so we just have to tilt the model back. But imagine the light source was moving with the model. In the next update that's coming up, the overhaul update for Porsche Studio, we'll be able to have that feature, but for now we have the old version. But yes, this is one of the biggest shadows right here, and that explains that shadow. That's why you have to have it, so I'm explaining why you have to have it. The next shadow is a result of the cube. So if the light source was coming from above, these side shadows right here, so this is a perfect cube. The cube for the face actually has its sides kind of kind of opened out like a like an umbrella or something. But you see the side of this is dark and the side of this is dark and the top of this is light and the front part is dark or mid-tone. 
So what does that mean? That means that the top of the sphere is lit, the sides are dark, and the front is just a mid-tone and a, gra a gradient towards the top half. So the head, the core shadows of the head are a combination of the sphere and the cube. And the side shadows, so the temple shadows, temple shadows or the z-axis shadows. Now what's the z-axis? The z-axis is this doohickey right here. <clears throat> okay, so we've got x, x, y, and z, the side of the cube, the side of the head, of the cube, of the head. All right, and then we've got that sphereness at the bottom that slowly uh, descends into the shadow, and then we've got the light at the top. So the biggest core the shadows, the biggest ones that you have to have, if the light is coming from top down, almost always it'll come from top down. Uh, you're drawing for uh, any kind of pinup, for any kind of game design, character design, uh, busts, just drawing busts for different characters, the light is going to come from top down. Um, we don't want to cast shadows upward, we want to cast shadows away from the face not into the face, which is where the eyes and then the crosshair of the, of the portrait is. So the temple shadows and the z-axis shadows. If you're missing any of these, if you're one of those artists that's missing any of these, stop missing them. This artist right here is missing them. They're, they're not missing the, the beard shadow, they have that down, but this, this really important one right here, this M shape or L shape or whatever helps you remember it better, you're missing that. Put your hands on your foreheads. The, the, one of the hardest, boniest places in your face, even if you gain a lot of weight, is your forehead. So this rigid area does something to our brush. It changes the way our brush works. And it makes it so that this is more bony, more geometric, less organic. It's still organic, but less curved. And we have more of the z-axis still preserved in this area. The z-axis is almost uh, immediately visible. When a light, a blue light is shining from the side, the blue light won't just go over everything, it'll stop here because this is a pure edge. It's perpendicular. These two areas look in different directions, so the light can only access this front part, which is the side in our perspective. So when you know about the cube, you think about the cube, you think about the sphere, <clears throat> you, you can shade anything. You can use all kinds of dynamic light sources. Who doesn't want to have a dynamic light environment in their portraiture? Everyone can benefit from a dynamic light environment. So don't forget about this one is sourced from the sourced from the sphere and this is sourced from the cube. So I'm not always talking about cube, cube, cube. There's a lot of the sphere still involved in drawing an organic structure, which is the body, the human body. Anything that breathes and lives has some kind of organic structure to it. I mean, unless we unless we unless you meet like Megatron or, or Optimus Prime and they're like robots, like they're sentient mechanics, which is really weird, but we don't have any of that. Everything that breathes and lives and, and exists is in one way or another organic, so it's got a lot of the sphere in its mechanical structure. Because, I don't know, the world the world has gravity, so it makes everything sphere and doesn't let anything keep its, keep its tip or something like that, but essentially... <clears throat> this is why this, these, are, these are the two main. Let's look at this other sub sub Con sub sub uh, what are they called sub core shadows the ones that are minor that attach to these so after we throw our blob in we throw the midtone blob we throw half shadow here two side shadows for the cube we start throwing in other minor pieces the way you think imagine you're th you're starting with a plain piece of clay and you're sculpting it the first thing you sculpt is the sphere shape and then you put in the cube sides at the sides for the temples and the skull then you get your thumbs or you get a tool and you start carving away at the eye sockets to make them holes because these eye sockets don't just sit as a sticker on the front part of the face they are holes they are cavities so we have to cast the shadows before we draw the eye cast the shadow of the eye socket before you draw the eye write that back to me <clears throat> why is it important that we have to cast the shadow Okay, I'm so sorry about my coughing. I'm not sure what's happening. I'm drinking tea, but it doesn't seem to go away. <clears throat> Let me just mute real quick. Okay, cast the shadow of the eye socket before you draw the eye. Good, good, good. 
Okay, it tells you where the socket of the shadows, uh, of, the, of the eyes are. Cast the shadows, cast the shadows, cast the shadows. Yeah, it tells you where the cast shadows of the eyes are. Why though? Why is it a bad thing to start with the outlines and the, and the um, eyelashes? Why isn't it smart to start with the eyelashes? Mid-tones, half shadow, shadow of the eye. Be cast shadow of the eye before you draw the eye socket. Mid-tones. Tanya, you missed one. Mid-tones, half shadow, and then side temple shadows. The side temple. The temple shadows on either side of the cube. Because it belongs to the bone structure. Thank you, Pish. Um, yes, pitch black. Is it pitch black? Um, but thank you, thank you. That's what. That's exactly why. If we start with the eyelashes first, we're just going to paint them away. There are so many more tinier shadows that come out of this big shadow. And then we have to add in the eyeball, um, which cancels out a lot of the eye socket shadow. So it's best to just leave iris, pupil, all that business at the very end when you're detailing. Try to capture the, those really, really good native shadows that need to be there in order to... To, to, to set up the anatomy. The anatomy comes in many levels. It comes in skeletal and muscular and uh, dermal. So, so these are all different layers that have to be considered. Skeletal is all of these core shadows belong to skeletal. And then muscular is where we decide where there's going to be fat, where there's going to be muscle, where there's going to be um, uh, wrinkles for the eyes to blink, so that's all. Eyelid is muscle, uh, laugh line is muscle, all of that stuff is muscle, eyebrows are muscle, and then we have dermal, which is when we're adding in those shines and those sparkles and the wet areas that sit on the skin that are very hydrated and always um, moist, so we have to spike values up and speculars up. So we actually, our, our, our drawing process and our drawing technique is hand in hand with, with, with uh, you know, with, with, with the medicine behind it all, with the, uh, the, the anatomy behind it all, the biology behind it all. We have to think about those layers and, and draw in those layers as well. So the next shadows are the eye socket shadows. So, so let's see if this person had any of these. Of course, they didn't have the side shadows on the temple. So again, to reiterate, we have to make sure we have these. They are the result of the temple, I mean, of the geometric cube that sits on the face. So that means we chop this down. Oh, I don't have any pen pressure. Yes, actually, no. Because I had to restart the services, so there's no pen pressure. <clears throat> okay, so again, new layer darken all right and then what we're doing is we're slowly throwing in my, my opacity goes all the way down when I correct with the darken layer and um, what we're doing is that M shape or that L shape whatever's comfortable for you zoomed out of course all of these core shadows where to place shadows on the face you can't do it without zooming out write that back to me okay even if the eyebrows are part of that shadow. Let go of drawing that halo around the brows. It's not necessary. You don't need it. And once you're done, just erase away what you don't need, depending on how much fat she has on her upper eyelid. So she seems to have a lot. She has like a hooded eye. Um, make sure that you respect the, like, the, the minor, the fact that you might have to shrink the brush and excess more of that lower uh, eye socket area. This eye socket shadow, so you got two dots for the eye socket. You also have a shadow on either side so between the eyebrows. So back to Portrait Studio, this shadow right here is extremely important. Again, look at the face from the side. The nose doesn't just connect to the forehead in one straight line, it depresses down, which means that this valley right here, this is a shadow that sits in between the eyebrows. So let's take a look. What, what, what's the deepest part of the eye? The deepest part of the eye socket. It's not the sides of the nose. So let's say we give the sides of the nose an area and we can't go past that area. All right, so this, the nose goes all the way up here. The nose is, is, is heightened. It's at a higher level in all of these areas which means that it's getting light. It's relieving itself from the shadow of the eye socket, meaning the shadow of the eye socket is limited to right here. 
above the inner corners. If your eye socket shadow is going all the way down here, it really doesn't make sense. It's not doing that at all. The sides of the nose, so this girl's face is very different from the other girl, but the sides of the nose here are all accessing light. Again, only the areas right beneath the eyebrows are getting that shadow. Why is it important to get shadow in this area? When this, when this area is recessed, because we live in the day, we're humans of the day, like creatures of the daytime, the sunlight can damage our eyes. So over the years, um, if you believe in evolution, if you believe in like a hybrid theory between evolution and creationism or whatever, um, eventually our eyes became recessed so that, to, you know, it just added that much more shade. So the bone structure adds shade, the hair on the eyebrow adds shade, the lashes add shade, the eyelids close when we're trying to sleep. Everything is made to protect the eye. Everything about the eye is to protect it, to have function in it. So it really doesn't make sense that we have this extra little hole on either side of the nose. I mean, it's the nose. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to delete those excessive shadows you have dragging all the way down. Those aren't cast shadows. Those are just you know habitual gestures of the brush that you had in there. This needs to be limited to the actual cavity that is the bone structure. So the eye socket ended here. It didn't go all the way to the nose. What? Shush. Okay. So right over here, normal, normal, and I'm just going to erase away. Okay, so let's take a look at just, I didn't do anything else other than these shadows and we'll see what happened to the face. A lot of this stuff can be taken care of early on in your process. You don't have to sacrifice all that, um, you know, the beauty of, your fa of the face you're going to draw. By skipping these levels, you, 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 you can benefit a lot from following these rules. Okay, so all of that business is just out of the way, and the eyes are allowed to shine. Suddenly, the eyes are so much more important. They're so much more visible. They're so much more accessible, and it feels like a real skeletal structure. And these are just minor little changes. Imagine going in and perfecting all of these areas, making sure that you have skeletal structure even on the smallest brush stroke, you're still considering the skeleton. So over here, this area gets a little bit of extra shadow on it. Over here, the hydration in the lips, so on the, on, the, on, the, on the eyelid, I mean, so on the dermal level, we're thinking about contrasts. So the inner corner is there. And then the nose structure needs to be just a little bit more defined. Connecting into the cheeks. One big highlight. I'm using a mid-tone to create that edge right here. So this is one of those areas where, you know, one of the core shadows of the face. It's not really a core shadow because it's part of an elevation, but it's that sharpness of the nose on either side and the fact that this value will never be the same as this value. It's not this. I never, ever do this. Okay. Then you've got the chin. One of the most important shadows is the half, is the beard shadow, the half shadow, but we interrupt it. We just throw a big blob for the chin. This is not how the chin works. Only the top of the chin gets that shadow on it. The top pointing part. Well, this part here, this is a very different kind of chin, but only the top half of the chin gets that. So if her chin was very, very strong, if she had a strong chin, only this top half, the shadow sits on the lower half, so if we decrease the ambience just a little bit and raise her skin value. In the new version, you'll be able to control the density of the shadow, so that'll be very, very nice. Decrease the brightness and just get rid of that extra shine. You can just see this is a very, very nice limitation right here, and the highlight climbs to this point. And if we cast some shadows, some longer shadows this way, again, only the top half of the chin is illuminated and the lower half isn't. That's why I call it a beard shadow. Do you see that beard effect? Okay, and then after that, only the, if, if, the, if the light is completely above her head, only her nose would be able to relieve itself from that long cast shadow and, um, and get the illumination on it only because the nose is the furthest pointing object. All right, so that's weird. Why did this move with it then? Anyways, <clears throat> so 
So, to see what that did, your your shadow was a little bit long along the sides. So all of this considered, we're still working with very very muddy tones. So here the values really don't don't drop in that in that really basic Rembrandt lighting. Everything is pretty light. Everything is lit up. And her skin value is pretty light. Even if we darken it, we don't really have these random drops. This is not high contrast compared to the shadow. But look at the contrast difference between this value and this value. So either you darken her or you lighten her. It's really your choice. You want to make her a lighter character or a darker character. I'll darken her so that we can erase away only where we need it. So this darkened layer, what it's going to do is going to keep her skin looking like it's the same kind of skin, the same ethnicity, whether or not it's under highlight. And I'm going to erase away only where I need to. And I'll do the opposite and make her a lighter skin and show you where you can diffuse the shadows. The point is low contrast. The skin isn't this crazy reflective thing. It's, it's, it's reflectivity isn't as perfect as a mirror. So only the areas that are wettest are really the areas that get the most light on them. And areas, of course, of the structure in combination with skeleton, fat, and, and uh, bone get the most. And if there is an area of the highest contrast on the face that you should focus on, that's the eyes. The eyes get the highest contrast. And then the forehead gets a lot of light on it. The nose is the next lightest area. And what we're trying to do is have less contrast. You see that? Now it looks like she has the same skin tone all around. Oops. <clears throat> so this is the kind of stuff, this is a lot of sciences to think about. And this is the kind of stuff the 14-day challenge was made for. You're focusing only on these core principles. And then before, after, patchy skin, you really didn't, uh, you, had amazing, you had an amazing face. You knew how to draw an eye. Uh, but the bone structure wasn't, wasn't, wasn't sharp. And if you want to lighten her altogether, you have to make sure the whole skin tone feels like it's lighter. Lighter skin has lighter shadows. Please write that back to me. Lighter skin has lighter shadows. I'm just going to lighten the whole thing and erase away where I don't need it. So cast shadow gets darkened again, nose shadow, half beard, sides, over here. I am using a soft brush and you really shouldn't have to edit so much to get the look back. We're just lightening it up so she looks like she's a lighter skinned character. Okay, lighter skin has lighter shadows. So if you're painting a character that's supposed to be a pale vampiress or something, please don't use deep muddy values on her skin because that's not possible. Okay, so any questions about the 14-day challenge? Any any serious questions about you know process or 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 how to use Portrait Studio to help you with it? So what I'm doing now is I'm just building up radially. If you don't know what radial shading is, I have so many videos on it so far. Um, it's really very important to, to learn how to use radial shading in your technique. It'll make blending a lot easier. It'll completely change the way you think about shading and the way you think about your brush and which brushes are the best to use for skin tones. But before, after, before, after. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up the edges here. So for the next challenge, a lot of people are asking me when is the next challenge brief going to be submitted. I just have to compile some really good references for the character roles that are that you're going to be assigned. So it'll be up within the week um, if I have time, which is uh, very likely, hopefully, considering scheduling and, and private tutoring, but I think I'll have uh, at least a, a day just to put it all together. Make sure the references are nice and easy to follow. Um, hopefully by then I'll have completed my submission so that you guys can use it as a reference on formatting and uh, design. OK. 
Okay, make sure the neck isn't too long and you end the neck pretty early. I want you to think of the neck as separate, separate from the trapezius muscles. So before, it looked like she had white paint just around her eyes and only around her eyes and after. I really want you to always work in a really mild, low contrast setting so that when you do use edges, when you do use, um, okay, so edges are one way to detail. Contrast is also another way to detail. But if you have both edges and contrast, it's information overload. The only, the only area that warrants all four methods of detailing, all three methods of detailing, shrinking your brush, high contrast, and, um, and edge work are the eyes. Everywhere else should be a step below that. So what we, when we remove the edges, when we remove the contrast, sorry, we have a chance to mess around with our edges. So what I'm doing right now is finding where the bone structure is. The shadows we talked about earlier, the, the remnants of the cube, they kind of got blended away. So I'm trying to get them back. Baby, come back. Sorry, that was random. <clears throat> However, light gets bounced off of the lips, so you have a point. Uh, the, good question. How do, to stop line dependency, especially around the nose? Um, that's a big one. Isn't the shadow under the nose too dark? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because at this point, it's going to be... I was, I was just about to get to it by edging the sides of the nose just like this. And when we, again, when we use an edge and we have low con high contrast, it's information overload. It'll look like she only painted like a like a mustache over here. So when we add in the edges, I'll get to that in a second where else to defuse, but we have to defuse it and get rid of that low contrast. So can anyone repeat to me the three methods to detail? Three techniques of detail. Right, so we have to have that cast shadow edge and we have to have another cast shadow edge right here under her eye, somewhere that, that, that represents there's a cast shadow. Even with a universal light source, we still have these really, really important cast shadows. Now this model here, she doesn't have any hair on her eyebrow. We just have a little bit of an indication where the eyebrow hair is. But if she had hair on her eyebrow, that would connect with the eye socket shadow. So I'm going to quickly blend away these edges, but not blend them like completely away. I still want to preserve uh, the indication that this area moves backward in the face the sides. Now, it, is, it is a bit of an exaggeration, but I'd rather exaggerate it for the demonstration and have you guys uh, defuse that method down. A student is always going to do a fraction of the, of the lesson. They're always going to save a fraction of the lesson or, or a half of the lesson. You always have to make sure you give more than they need. And then, uh, and then you go from there and hope that they memorized all of it or it sunk in. So right here, I'm, this diffusing the contrast has allowed me to 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 really in, in, in include some nice shadows here, some contours for the cheek. So starting low contrast is really really good for your for your painting process. So. Um, all right, how to draw the shadow under the nose. Um, all right, I'll get to that as I defuse this one. So I'm defusing this one. The more we defuse it, the, um, the more of an opportunity we will get to exaggerate the cast shadows of the nose on the inside of the nostril. So that only the nostrils really should be the darkest points. Let me throw a little shadow there. You see how we've lifted the bone structure up because we were allowed now, we have time, we have space to use some bone structure and, and this, this M shape is guiding us around it. We haven't overused the shadows, they're not patchy too early. So this lack of early contrast is allowing us to do a lot of work. This area here is really patchy as well. But I am using soft brush, so it is kind of building a, a standard now for softness that I have to follow everywhere else on the portrait. Okay. 
So what comes next after we establish these sides is again that light, that diffuse that happens on the side. Just like that. So we end up getting a terminator line. So we don't fully throw this whole outside portion of the face in this constant shadow. What we do is we diffuse it again with some nice secondary light source diffusions. Bouncing outside of the room, the room is pretty light, so you've kept your light environment nice and solid. The room is also bright along with the face. It isn't just a dark room and a universal light sources. Universal light sources light up the room. Write that back to me. So working light is really good for you. It's really good for your painting. I'm not sure if I asked you guys a question. Oh yeah, the three the three um, methods of detailing. Um, edges just means one value stop, another begins. Decrease brush size, increase contrast, add, add edge work. Excellent. Those are the three ways to create detail in a portrait. If you're having trouble, see which one you really need. Maybe you, really, you need only two of those and not all of them. Maybe you need only one of them. So this diffusion, what it's done is it's made the face feel like it's three-dimensional and we've added this z-axis, that z-axis of the cube. We've added that in there. And that's led us to a better read at the very end. I'm just perfecting this here. So before, after, and now we have this really nice plate. If you wanted to spike that contrast and really make her pop, so adding in some shimmer, adding in a really, really high point, adding in that glow, now you're allowed to because you aren't using that white everywhere else. So I'm going to use Dodge Tool on Midtones. Let me see if I can pull it off this way. And we're slowly just building up the highest points, starting with the cheeks. And these core shadows that we've set up have established a really nice skeletal and uh, muscular harmony with the rest of the face. This is just one way to glamorize a face by increasing the contrast um, this way. But only in select areas and only areas around the light spots of the face. They are just this one big on switch right here. I don't want to use contrast here, but we have another option, which is just creating some edge work. So I won't use contrast, but I'll use edge work to cast that shadow. The upper lip. So how to shape the shadow of the nose? It's really just triangular. It's the exact opposite. So when we look at the nose from worm's eye, it just looks like that, and then the two nostrils. So the cast shadow is going to look like that, but inverted, because the light source is seeing the top of the nose. So the, the shape the cast shadow is, is, is the shape that the light source sees, so it's going to be triangular. So that's the general shape here, it's triangular. Okay, so I don't know which day this was for the person who I... This was a little while ago, actually. This was before, this was supposed to be for this Thursday before the Witch's Hovel Critique Day, but I never got around to it. Okay. I'm creating this edge here for the top of the nose, and then I'm going to cast that shadow. So now, then blend it up. Oops. So the skin feels like it's breathing. It feels a little bit more alive. I think she does look a little bit old, um, but uh, there, there's a lot of factors for why she looks just a little bit old. Um, it could be the cheekbone laugh line right here. It could also be the lips, how they have that line. That line happens when you get old. So what you want to do is replace that line right here with a kind of like... Um, uh, uh, like a, what's the word for it? Like a bulgy, fleshy, 
layering shelving of the lips. That sounds so wrong. Um, but we just use the radial shading to create that gradual edge on either side of the lip and connect it with the beard shadow or that half shadow. And we have a little bit of light at the top of the lip. Catching the light from above, so catching the top of the lip. I have to shrink my brush for this. And I just shrink my brush as I add in the highlight. Right now what you're doing is you're drawing the nose nostril shadow, uh, but you really need to just sculpt it and not draw it. So you were using a line here. It's a shame. Shame. <laughs> I still think what happened to that nun was just so unfair. That was so unfair. Anyways. Connecting that. And then this Cupid's bow kind of just sneaks under that cast shadow just like that because it is still illuminated and it's also one of the wet areas of the face. And another chance to throw in some, some so this tip actually needs to be going, needs to go much higher. So you the tip for the nose that you drew was down here, it should be up here at the actual height of the nose. But yeah, the secondary light source chance is right over here. So these are the kind of things you're supposed to be practicing on your 14-day challenges. Um, try not to miss these out. Like try, to, try not to miss these or leave them out. Okay. So this area here needs a sharp edge. This is really low resolution, so I don't think I can. Let me see if I can do it over there. We basically just grab the highlighter color and create that edge. I don't want to shrink my brush and I also don't want to bring in contrast. But all of this is possible only because we have a good plate and the plate is, is made you know, successful by knowing where to place these core shadows in a portrait. You always think about the, the core shadows before you think about decorating, before you think about props, before you think about anything. You think about the lighting. Even in photography, you think about the lighting first. What's my light going to look like? How much of the face do I want to show? So I'm creating this cast shadow because it's part of that upward moving plane. And then just blend these out. just using a smudge brush, um, a smudge tool with a scatter brush. Okay, so before, after, before, after. So the nose shadow was too dark. You, the, the eyes weren't really allowed to shine. You overdrew the highlights around the eyes as if you're telling us, hey, the eyes are really important. We know they're important. That's where we're going to look. When we meet a face, when we meet someone, we're looking at their eyes. So now that we have this really, really good plate, we can go in and throw those shadows all the way to the dark. Completely introduce the full, full darkness level that we want to use. And this will make the form pop. This excessive small brush, sharp edge, really high contrast is only warranted for the eyes. Only the eyes can get this much shadow, this much contrast on them this much detail because they're the area that demands the most attention. When we look at someone, when we meet someone, we're looking at their eyes. Oops, what the hell? And then we go down to the nostril. Only the nostril's deepest part gets that dark spot. Deepest point of the lips get that dark spot. We don't use it everywhere and we definitely don't use the white everywhere either. Okay, so I messed up just over here. To just fix that real quick. Doesn't look right. To push her temple back just a little further. Same sharpness though. Okay. And for the pigmentation, so mascara, eyeliner, all that business, any kind of pigmentation, 
breaks the rules and introduces a darker shade. You can even use a, a dark spot shade and you know if she's wearing a black shirt you're gonna have to use black. Dark spots only mean, no man's land only means on the skin, on the areas of the skin you're not allowed to use you know, random splotchy blacks for the sides of the nose and whatnot. I'm just gonna get darken layer and just darken like a nice halo around the lashes because lashes are hairy but we can't draw every single lash we just draw a hint at the at the uh, kind of like the cluster of the detail there are many areas here that we could sharpen so this we could sharpen this and create the feeling of a cast shadow coming off the eyebrows so creating this kind of feeling like that which would really benefit the, the face right now. We need to see some sharper cast shadows. Maybe having some more of the, oopsie. Some like a little a dimple on either side of the lip or something. <clears throat> and then this wetness right here gets a little bit more the skin is very, very different from the rest of the skin around it. So what we got to do is just sharpen that and show where those two kinds of skin separate. Zoom out, of course, to reassess it. Make sure you fix it. We zoom in only because we needed to shrink our brush for this detail area. But we're not raising contrast. I did not touch contrast. So, so can anyone summarize the biggest things we learned today? Can anyone talk about them in a quick note or two? Just summarize what we covered. So before, after, before, after. When we fix our values, we open up room for rendering. We know that this is a good plate on which to just dive in and just start introducing, you know, freckles and and other minor detail because the plate is so well constructed. The details and the lashes and all that little stuff comes way after comes way after the plate. And the plate is a combination of shadows that reflect the sphere and the cube, which is the skeleton. The sphere and the cube, which is the flesh and the skeleton respectively. As they combine together to create the human face. Throwing some waterline here. I would love to see more of the eye, so eye shadow. I mean, the eye socket, the crease of the li eyelid. But I just have to draw over all your little lashes. <clears throat> so let's see what everyone's saying. Why do people? Why do people flip only horizontally? Isn't flipping vertically too? Good too. Uh, yeah, it is. I sometimes flip vertically just to make sure that everything looks right. The skeletal structure comes first. In low contrast, edge, zoom out while you draw the shadow. Um, zoom out to paint core shadows. Um, this says, am I the only one who doesn't see that? Uh, she looks just a little bit old uh, because her mouth is a little bit distant from her nose as well. And her uh, mouth is just a little bit wide. But it's just the kind of face she has. Um. Okay, so all of these areas were just rendered very, very nicely. They feel very natural. Just trying to make sure we don't have any excess contrast where we don't need it. So I'm just getting rid of that contrast over here. So before, after, before, after. We really need those shadows. We need to keep them preserved throughout our painting process, respecting them, knowing where they belong. They make the face feel like it's more part of a light environment. There's still more work, more work to do, of course, but I need to get in um, get on to everyone else's uh, 14 days, but um, 
I hope you see the benefit of, of controlling your values like this. We can go even further in the contrast with the eyes, make her eyebrows really dark, and it'll still look right for some reason, because the eyes are excused contrast here. You're allowed to have as much as you want. Go crazy with the detail. This is 100% of the radius. It all starts here and it radiates out and gets less and less detailed. But it only passes because the face is nice and set up. <clears throat> Bonish gives more hard contrast edge too. Yes, excellent. So there's much more work to do here, but I don't have time. But in a private session, I would have just taken it all the way. So over here, again, we're missing nearly all of them. So I would just lasso it in. If you're this early in the stage, just lasso it in. Follow the bone structure and lasso in that that core. You need that in there. It has to be in there. You can't not have it because that's the anatomy. The skull is what shares what we all share around the globe. We all have the same genetics. We all have the same skull, so we need that shadow right there. And then, of course, we need to blend it away, but it's it's just there right now for demonstration. For this sharp, I mean. If we don't have it, it, it feels very, very wrong. It feels like something is missing. And that's basically the cube. The cube is missing. And then over here, this is actually a 14-day challenge graduate, so this is their day one. And this is their day 14. So they have these shadows, which looks amazing. Their day one had it as well, but it looked a little bit excessive, and the head was a little bit bulbous. Um, the forehead felt like it was bigger than the cheekbones. It should be a little bit equal or less. It got a little bit um, more and more focused. You had the sharpness there. The nose started starting to look great. The only thing you're missing, really, is the jawline. So we just need a little bit of a jawline. Push these little bulbous areas back in. And then this length is actually not the same as this, so the inner part of the lower eyelid is shorter. Because it's circular, remember, it's not a cube. So it's going to wrap around just like that. And this actually starts a little later than that. It starts down here and then blend away. So I'm making it sharp again for the demonstration, but you should blend it away. I'm going to keep it sharp. So any questions so far that I've missed? Ista, could you do more of the head planes with hard edges? Um, really, it's just the, if you go to Portrait Studio, you go to Female, you go to Low Poly, this is pretty much what it means to preserve the edges. So some areas of these will be blended and some areas won't. And pretty much the areas that are part of the cube, so if we tilt the head all the way up, let's shine some more light. This is where that cube goes down into the sides of the cube. You see that? And this is the front part of the cube, and these are the sides of the cube. That's really the areas we're talking about here. These, this, 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 this beard shadow right here, these are all preserved, and then you carve these on. So if you study low poly and if you have Portrait Studio, just do some low poly studies. Forget about high poly, forget about that for just a second because if you do this for a week and then go back to this, you'll see values you never saw before. You'll see stuff your eyes were blind to before. You have to teach yourself planes of the face of vocabulary. You have to learn to speak in that language. And you only learn to speak in that language when you do studies, when you keep yourself familiar with that entire vocabulary. So every single face you're ever going to draw has temples, and these temples are on a z-axis. They move away on the side, similar to a cube. A cube isn't a technique. The cube is a, is a detectable uh, geometry of, in, in the anatomy of the face. Write that back to me. The cube isn't a technique. It's a detectable geometry of the anatomy of the face. It's detectable on the face. It's a real part of the structure of the face. It's part of the mechanics of the head. Uh, do you ever plan on drawing other things? I'm not sure if you're asking me that question. Can you please elaborate on the concept of the on switch? Why is there an inverted uh, triangle of value on the forehead? Because the forehead is the highest point, and it gets brightest here, and then it moves down this way because all of these are just symmetrical, so a triangular is symmetrical. So the on switch, basically what I mean is, you know, like on a computer, when you turn the computer on, like, let's look over here. 
Oh, it's not the icon isn't here, but like a um uh, I don't know what a this is what I mean by on switch, um on icon. Yeah, this, but inverted, right? So you've got the forehead, this is the forehead and this is the nose. This is what I mean when I say on switch but inverted. Alright. It could also be a triangle. This is what I mean by on switch, though. So we've got that. Let's look at the high poly and raise the contrast just a little bit. It's just this line. Squint your eyes with me. Everybody just squint your eyes. Just, just squint your eyes. Um, and then you can just follow that path along the forehead all the way down. Let's change the, um, the light to be a little bit like this. And you can actually see it here. The highest point of her forehead going down into that C shape and then her nose. Of course the chin is added at the very end. All right, but that's if the light source was facing this way. Typically all your character designs should just use this light source without this much contrast of course. Try to keep the contrast at a low so that you have an opportunity to detail. Um, a, a low contrast face with nice edges really really lets you um, detail. It really opens the door for you to detail. Um, the cube is a detectable geometry uh, of a technique. No, you had it all wrong. No. Um, <laughs> it still was not asking you that I was asking. Lucy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were asking me if I was going to draw other stuff. The cube isn't a technique. It's a geometry. Mm -hmm. It's not a technique. It's not me making you think about shadows better. It's not you know, an optional technique. The cube is not an option. It's a real part of our three-dimensional realm, three-dimensional physics and the way biology is, is anatomy and structure and all that works together in a portrait. <clears throat> all this time I was confused that it was so simple. I'm sorry, Antares. Um, no need to squint the eyes. Video resolution is already so low. I think that's on your part because I'm streaming in 1080p. I think that's uh, that's on your part, part, Lady Irony. Um, so any other questions before I before I go? All right. So please don't forget these shadows. They're so 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 important. So this is your day one. I hope right now you're still going at it. I haven't really seen or, or, or followed up with your with your other days. So many words. It's okay, no. <laughs> I think your um your day thirteen is much prettier. Has a much prettier face than your day fourteen. It's mostly because her eyes are tilted down more, she's got bigger brows, she's got a smaller nose and a and a more less detailed mouth, like it has just more volume in it. But the nose here is much better than this nose. This nose has more form than this one. But this face here is very unique. You have a very you kind of face that you've developed over these 14 days. Congratulations. Round of applause for you. What's my favorite color? <laughs> um, can you give us your knowledge in the form of bread? <laughs> Uh, is there any chance of getting a crit of my fourteenth day? It's if it's not cool, I know you're busy. Um, I, I can't I can't track yours down. If you could send it to me, uh, right now the class is um, I'm out of time, but if you could send it to me on Facebook, I'll be able to take a look at it there. Okay, Antares. So if you're curious about Portrait Studio, you want to know what it is. Um, it's available on my site, istabrak.com. And um, whatever I use today is available there, brushes, all that stuff is available in the store. Uh, for the community, for the next challenge, um, the Fancy Adventure Fellowship, the, the brief is coming soon, I promise. Also, for the community followers, if you want to join the community, the links are all up here. YouTube, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, all of these are up here. Please go there. But here's istabrak.com. If you can, please don't update to the new Google Plus. The new Google Plus looks like shit. And it doesn't let anyone see the community rules for some reason. And it filters like a feed or a wall. All group, all group, um, all group content. All group activity. Which is really weird and it goes against what a group is. Um, which is really annoying. 
Uh, so I, I, I really don't know what to do about it. Soon we're all going to be using it. They're forcing everyone to use it soon. I hope they change the way they set up the group. But I don't, I don't think, like, it's all messed up and big and bulky, and it really doesn't give you, like, a zoomed out version of everyone's submissions on the wall, which will really mess me up. I think I'm just going to have to go someplace else to, to, to relocate our group if Google Plus really fucks us up like this. Um, I don't know if I should start a thread and ask them not to do anything. I mean, who are they going to, are they going to listen to me? Should I even try? But I know my friend was telling me that a lot of classes use this for their classes and uh, signing homework and um, and all that. So schools use it, use Google Hangouts. I mean, Google Groups for community um, for educational purposes. Use Google Community for educational purposes. Um, but I don't know if they're gonna keep all of the basics in place and just reorganize the format. I don't mind the reorganization of the format, but people need to see the rules because a lot of people have been breaking the rules. And, uh, and please don't just submit something with a picture telling me how you made it. I want to know what the issue is so I can help you out. Um, this is not a gallery. This is a critique community. So you have to post something you want critiqued and you have to explain what it is you're having trouble with. So it's for educational purposes. Again, this is a class. It's not a, it's not a personal gallery. But yeah, we're just going to have to find a way to, to figure out when, if the update really disrupts our activity here and disrupts our formats and really gets in the way of all the theme submissions and assignments and me staying in contact with you guys and disrupts our communication. I'm sorry to say, but we will have to relocate to a more, um, you know, a better community, that a better program that offers us different, what, what we need, basically. I'm not sure where we would go and I'm not going to DeviantArt. Don't even suggest it. Fuck DeviantArt. It's gone to hell. It's become the art trench. It's become the art back alley of the internet. Anyway, I'm done talking. I'm done ra rambling on like an old lady. Uh, I can try Facebook, yeah. Um, uh, I, I can trust. I mean, I can try Facebook. And thank you for trusting me, Harrisworth. Aristocats. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the fans are called Aristocats. You're not my fans, you're my colleagues. You are my peers. You're not my fans. I'm not something at the end of, of, of it all. I'm not the beginning and the end of this community. If I were to sign off and never sign back on, you guys better still be stay connected to each other. I'm not something to be uh, fanned. I don't know what the word is. Um, I'm losing my voice now. But thank you everyone for coming today. Please make sure you go to, go to com if you're interested in anything you saw today or you want to stay connected to the community. Follow these links. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.